Hello students, it's Dr. Yu. Today, we're gonna to learn about presenting with data. This is gonna be a four-part series where we're gonna be looking at data visualization in steps. This first lecture is gonna be focused entirely on principles, core principles behind data visualization that I'll be referencing throughout the entire lecture. So first, we need to learn four core principles of PowerPoint. The first principle is this. You have to remember that when you are presenting with PowerPoint, that it's like presenting as an engineer of a train. Your audience are the passengers and you are the engineer or conductor who drives the train. And the principle is you're trying to get your audience from point A to point B. But you don't want audience members to jump off this train in between getting from A to B. Because the problem is, your train is a slow moving train. So audience members can jump off and be okay. Your job is to keep the presentation on track and to ensure that your audience members stay on track and not get distracted by other things. One of the operating principles when you are driving a train then is you don't want to divide the tracks or in other words, you don't want to divide your audience's attention. One of the biggest rules of PowerPoint is don't divide your audience's attention. Keep their attention single. Keep their attention focused on one thing at a time. When you give your audience two different things to do at once, they have to choose between listening to you or doing the thing that you ask. You want to minimize those moments as much as possible. Now we're talking about PowerPoint specifically right now because this is going to influence how we do data visualization because in a lot of contexts, you are showing your data in a PowerPoint situation. The next principle is this. You are feeding a child. Remember that your audience can only take in some amount of information at a time. If you throw a really busy graph at them all at once, you overwhelm them and cause information overload. When your audience is overloaded with information, they have to try to make sense of the information that you're showing them, and at the same time, try to listen to what you're saying at, at, at simultaneously. What you have to remember is that when you're presenting with PowerPoint, you are feeding a child. When you feed a child, you feed them one spoonful at a time. You get a little spoonful, you put it in the child's mouth, you let them chew, you let them swallow, you smile at them, and then you get the next spoon and you put a little bit more in their mouths and you let them chew and swallow it. What you don't do is go, hey child, here is this whole Gerber jar of baby food, now eat it, chug it, chug it, chug it. No, 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 the, the, the child would drown, the, the child would, would choke. But the problem is, when you're presenting complex data, it's just like feeding a child. You have to give it to them little bits at a time so they can digest what they're seeing instead of just dumping the whole bottle on them. So remember that principle when we're talking about PowerPoint and data especially. The third principle is think like a movie director. Every moment in your PowerPoint is a moment where you should be thinking about what is the point here. Just like in a movie, a movie is broken up into scenes and shots. Think of your PowerPoint as a, as a movie film strip. And in this slide, here's what I want to see happen. Here's what I think the dramatic moment is going to be in this slide. And then when we move to this slide, here's what I want to see happen. Think of yourself as a movie director. Your PowerPoint is in segments. It's in slides. What is the point of that segment that you're, you're using? And what are you building up to and what are you building from? the previous slide and into the next slide. And the fourth principle is this. PowerPoint and data visualization is glance media. When you design your slides or when you design your graphs in a presentation context, it should be something that is glanceable. Notice these highway signs. You can be driving 85 miles per hour and you can still quickly glance and get the ideas of what these signs are saying because of the way that they're designed. You don't have to pull over and say, okay, I gotta read these signs, hang on a second, I gotta take a second to read it and make sense of everything. No, 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 this is glance media. You can look at it and then you can just keep on going. 
It's the same thing with PowerPoint. The problem is many people, when they make PowerPoint or when they make data, it's not glance media. Like you can't just look at it. You have to sit there and read it and try to make sense of it. And that slows your audience down, that distracts your audience, and that's what causes your problems in presentations when people don't get everything. So those are four principles I want you to know right away that apply to PowerPoint and also data visualization. Now, specifically on data visualization, there are four more principles I want you to remember. The first principle is design for the context. When we're talking about design for the context, there's gonna be two general contexts in which you're going to present data to people. The first context is an exploratory context. In an exploratory context, you don't have a specific conclusion that the, you want the audience to necessarily reach. In an exploratory context, what you're saying is, here is some data and I have no idea what the, what the point is. I don't know what the takeaway is. I don't know how to make sense of this data. I have just no clue what is going on. So I want your opinions on what you think this means. That's exploratory context. So you would use an exploratory context of presentation, perhaps in a problem solving meeting where you're somebody who's helping present the problem, not the solution. And so you're asking the audience for their feedback on what is the point of this graph? I don't know. I don't know what the, you know, all those things help me make sense of these numbers. But the other context is an explanatory context. In an explanatory context, you have a specific argument you're trying to make. You have a conclusion that you want the audience to reach, and you're using the data to support that conclusion. When you have an explanatory context, you are telling the audience, this is what I want you to take from this data set. This is the takeaway that I want you to walk away with when you look at this table. You generally use the explanatory context when you're trying to persuade an audience of something, or you're trying to inform them of something. You use an exploratory context when you just don't know, like you're just exploring data and you just don't have a specific conclusion to reach. You don't really have an agenda behind the data. In most cases, you're probably gonna be using the explanatory context more times than not. And so we have to make sure you're ready for the context of explanation and not just exploration. The second is also, you gotta design for the medium. First, is this a written medium? or is this a presentation medium? Now, luckily, most of the principles that I'll teach you in data visualization and in the readings will apply to both the written and the presentational context. The main difference is this though. When you're presenting for a written context, you're gonna have to think about the use of callouts and telling the story in a graphic way so the audience knows what the graph is really trying to say instead of just kind of leaving it for them up to interpretation, like it's abstract art or something. Whereas in the presentation context, you're gonna provide those callouts, but what you're gonna probably wanna do is emphasize the use of color more, or maybe some text boxes if you want, and really walk them through how to make sense of this data. But the second principle is this, of data visualization, which is don't make us think. Now. You might be thinking, but doesn't data make you think? Yes, but that's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is don't make us think about the design. You might have heard of that little saying that bad design is like a bad joke. If you have to explain it, then it's not very good. It's the same thing with graphs. If people have to look at your graph and think about it for a while, what it even says, and they're not focusing on the message or takeaway, it's not a good graph. You didn't do your job in visualizing the data. You just threw some numbers out and you know did some quick little chart thing, and you made your audience think more about the design than they had actually about the content. But also think about this. I'm gonna show you some pictures, and I want you to think about in what order did you look at them. Ready, set, Go. Now, if you're like most people, and I've run this slide in many workshops, you probably went in this order. You went in a Z, which leads to the third principle, swim with disease. In the previous slide, you probably went left to right. You probably did something like this. And most times when people read, at least in Western culture, is they start from left to right. So when you design your graph, you always want your graph to flow left to right if possible. And if you have to go down, 
it's gonna go down from the right to the left and it's gonna form a Z. What you don't wanna do is put your conclusion on the bottom here and we swim against the Zs. You wanna swim with the currents of reading, not against the currents of reading. Here's another example. Reading this is pretty easy, wouldn't you say? But what if we put it like this? This is harder to read because it's not going left to right. It's going down and then down. It's going from up to down, then down to up. Too hard to read. Now, you're thinking, well, this is textual data. What's the big deal? But the problem is when you're also doing this with quantitative data, you often may have a box at the bottom, like a little key here, and then you have the data and the key tells you like what everything means. And what your eyes have to do is they have to go down to up, down to up, down to up, down to up. So they're having to do this number. Okay. And they have to look down and up and all that. And so instead of just going a simple eye flow, like left to right, and maybe like a little Z fashion, you're making the eye movement go up and down, up and down, up and down. It looks really ugly. So one of the principles of this, like a sub principle is this. Don't make us play basketball. Don't make us play basketball with our eyes. Set up the graphs so that they can be read left to right instead of doing this thing where I have to do up and down and up and down because I have to look at the key, then I have to look up here, then I have to look at the key again to see what this means, I have to go back up here, then I have to, and see I'm playing basketball. I don't want to play basketball with my eyes. It makes me dizzy, it makes it harder to read the graph, it makes it harder for the audience to understand what's going on, they miss the point, they ask you questions in Q&A that you thought you already answered, it's not fun, it's not fun. So don't make us play basketball. And that's gonna really speak to arrangement and design of your graphs. And we'll talk about that in, in the later lectures. But the fourth and final principle is this. The best graph to use when you're visualizing data is the one that's easiest for your audience to understand. I think one of the biggest problems that I see when I look at graphs and, and charts from people, engineers, software people, data, doesn't matter who it is, people seem to think that if I use this complicated graph, like, it makes me look smart and I'm, I'm flexing my, my intellectual muscles. And it's like, no, the best graphs that actually make you look smart are the ones that when you take complex information and make it easy to understand. So the best graph to use is one that your audience is gonna grasp quickly and understandably. And it's on you, the data visualizer, to figure out how to make those graphs easy to understand. And so this is where you're learning exactly how to do that by taking this data visualization segment. Overall, we looked at eight principles that four apply to PowerPoint generally and four apply to data and graphs. What we're gonna look at next is three ways to visualize data. We're gonna look at, first off, textual visualization it's important for us to understand this because if you want to fix all your problems with PowerPoint, it starts with understanding textual visualization because that's where a lot of people have trouble is visualizing text. Then we're going to talk about tables and how to do good tables uh, in terms of visualization. We'll talk about progressive tables and things like that in PowerPoint, but we'll learn how to design tables at least for a written in PowerPoint context. And then we're also going to talk about graphs. These are the three typical ways you visualize data, either through text, tables, or graphs. So join me in part two. We're going to start with textual visualization. See you there.